Welcome back to the Heteo Home Energy Show, where we bring you real insight into home energy solutions and eco-smart technologies. Today, we're back with special guest speaker, Chris Higgs, Managing Director of Freedom Heat Pumps, and Heteo Commercial Director, Tom Farquhar. In the last episode, we talked about Chris and Tom's journey into heat pumps and the growth of freedom. Today, in this episode, we're going to discuss the barriers installers face in upskilling to heat pumps and how we address the industry challenges that these installers experience. So enjoy the show. One of the points I wanted to, to cover today was that you, there's, there, there's, there's green shoots that wider, larger businesses are starting to see mm. that, you know, this is a trend that's going in the right way. And anybody that's that's looking at it thinking heat pumps are going to die off, I think if they just look at the the, the recent acquisition of uh, of Freedom Heat Pumps by mm. by Certas, yeah, huge player in the in the fossil fuel yeah. space. And yeah. um, do you want to talk us a little bit around that? But what what does that what's that meant for for Freedom? What's what's the recognition there? Yeah, uh, I mean, absolutely massive. So we went on a bit of a journey at the beginning of last year um, in terms of sort of looking for someone to take Freedom Heat Pumps to the next level, um, both for the industry as well as, you know, us as a uh, us as a business. Um, but, you know, as a managing director, I could take us to a certain point and I felt like through lack of experience, through... Um, you know, perhaps just not having the people within the business to be able to support us to continue growing, that was the right time for us to look for additional investment, but also with investment um, came, um, you know, Great responsibility. <laughs> <laughs> Great responsibility. Yeah. Yeah, like, um, yeah, like, like Batman. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> See, now I have to do what? By, you know, I'm sure you have to do, like, have board meetings and shareholder updates. Yeah, and, yeah. and you know what? It's, it's funny. I always sort of informally had to have that anyway. And because I've always worked, um, obviously, Gary B back in the day and then um, Stu Cooper and Danny and, um, you know, shout out to obviously Graham and Paul Taylor and, and Gary Spicer, who were members of our board when I was at Freedom Heat Pumps. Informally, I've always had those connections. I've always had to, you know, report to someone higher up. Um, so the move across to Certes wasn't really any different. And actually, they've provided a huge amount of structure around what we're trying to do. So, you know, in my head, the way that I envisaged it is that we we know how to grow a heat pump company or we know how to, to build a heat pump company. You know, I'd, I'd like to think we're one of the best in the UK because that's all that we do. I mean, you know, God forbid, you know, give us some solar PV or something and we, you know, we wouldn't know what to do with it. We're like, oh, this looks interesting. Um, but heat pumps, that's all we know how to do. So, um, you know, we know how to run a heat pump company. What we don't necessarily know how to run is a big heat pump company. And the industry needs more of that. So they need bigger and bigger companies to be able to buy more, to be able to reduce the cost of the equipment, to be able to provide, you know, more robust supply chains. So, we sort of owed it to the industry for us to continue growing, as other companies within the industry, um, you know, for them to continue growing to ensure that we had robust enough supply chains for when more and more installers start to come on board. So we started a bit of a journey at the back end of, uh, sorry, at the beginning of last year um, to look for um, uh, basically investors or companies, a bit of a sort of, like a real life dragon's den really stood there with this heat pump company saying you know peter jones he, he interested in having a go and he's like yeah yeah i'll have a go i, I imagine i don't <laughs> watch a lot of dragons that's how the conversation went <laughs> yeah, 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 go. yeah yeah you know what chris i like your socks still got the patter go. haven't we yeah. <laughs> yeah. so we um yeah so we went on a journey obviously um yeah you know, spots a few different uh different investors and and certas really stood out to me because you know, they are um, the, the UK's largest uh, liquid fuel and um, heating oil distributor. Sorry, lubricant and liquid fuel distributor. I think that's how they term it. Um, so biggest in the UK, massive, massive company. So what on earth do they want with a heat pump company? Um, but obviously what they want to do is they want to start transitioning some of their customers across to renewable heating. So they've got 250,000 um, 250, domestic and I think 300,000 in total commercial and domestic customers that are all taking heat and oil at the moment that they know in the future are going to be wanting heat pumps or other low carbon solutions. That's got to be, a, I mean, we know the, the heat pump industry at the moment has got a, a, a real lack of installers that have made that transition mm. over from, from fossil fuels. And there's some amazing 
installers out there yeah. that are still out there fitting fossil fuels and, and, and no doubt will continue to do so whilst there's still consumer demand for that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But those installers have got to see that as a, as a big, big green light to say, if an organization like that Mm. With the with the with the might that they have behind them, mm-hmm. they don't make decisions like that on mm. on a whim. You know that isn't somebody who's just woken up and said, "Ah, oh, you know, I feel like doing something good. I'm going to find a, a green yeah. company." Yeah, yeah. You know that will be a very very strategic move mm. towards uh, starting to to bring in renewables into the equation. Yeah. So the installers that are out there fitting oil boilers. If they if they're looking at that and they're and they're thinking right, how do I make this next step into this industry and and freedom as a as a at the moment as a design and, and a distributor of heat pump systems a designer of his, and distributor of heat pump systems and they're sat there with a consumer that's oil boiler is is at the end of life or it's 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 needing to be replaced if we just talk about that installer's journey and if mm. they ca- if they came to to freedom what does that look like i mean the, 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 we we can we'll cover a bit around the you know the certification process maybe separately but just yeah, yeah. that that journey they come to you they've got a house mm. that that wants a heat pump fit what does that look like when they come to freedom yeah i mean as a standard um you know we can take um very little information through to you know, a set of architectural plans to be able to specify which equipment's required. Uh, obviously, over the past 13 years, we've sort of evolved that offering uh, based on um, the maturity of the installers that we deal with. You know, some of the guys that we deal with for, you know, th- 10, 13 years, they don't need that same level of support that they needed right at the beginning, which is brilliant for us to see because then it opens up that resource to be able to support um, new entrants to the market uh, yeah. because they may have never done a, BSEN 12831 heat loss, like room by room heat loss calculation. And whilst it's it's whilst heat loss calculations are are important, um, you know, if they've never seen it before, they need a bit of support around that. So you've got the heat loss calculations, just the specification of the kit. Um, you know, there's there's quite a lot of um you know, misunderstanding as well as like conflicting information, like on different forums around, you know, what size circulation pump do you need? And, you know, what size copper pipe work do you need? Um, you know, uh, will a 22 mil two port valve work? It, it, we try and bring all, all that together to try and make a um, as easier an installation as uh, as possible. There's always little bits that we can tweak. So if you've got an installer that's perhaps um, a bit more knowledgeable and knows the installation, knows the home, and can as perhaps uh, measured the heat loss, so we don't need to you know do the heat loss calc for them, or they um, have done the pressure drops through their system. That's music to our ears because that's only going to make a more efficient um, heat pump system. But where we've got, or even efficient heating system, but where we're coming from an industry that, you know, back in 2005 when we had the condensing boiler mandate, with the condensing boiler mandate, we should have had low temperature heating at the same time. But we didn't. It was just condensing boilers installed exactly the same way as non-condensing boilers were. So we're trying to sort of cover two hurdles at the same time. Mm-hmm. We're trying to lower the t- that lower the heating system temperature at the same time as migrating to what we've always termed, you know, the next logical heating system, you know, the next logical heating source. And that's all the heat pump is, is a boiler that sits in the garden. It's a, um, it's, you know, the next generation of heating source. But there's also a third thing that's trying to be addressed at the same time. And that's the fabric of the building. Mm. Cause at the same time as saying, let's get everybody to low temperature and let's get everyone to a heat pump. Yeah. They also threw a curveball in his head and let's also try and improve the leaky UK housing stock. Yeah, which we do want to do. There's there's a big you know conflict at the moment between this this phrase of like fabric first, and and you know some people sort of live and die by it and say fabric first. You know you've got to increase insulation levels, got to make sure you know the double glaze it. Sorry, the single glazing windows are now double glazed and etc. But I think there's a more measured approach to it. It's um, it's about looking at the installation, saying, looking at the entire property and saying, right, what is going to work for the homeowner? You know, in terms of um, what's going to give, if, if a big driver, you know, obviously I'm in a fortunate position that, uh, you know, I knew a guy who could sort me out a heat pump cheap. Do you know what I mean? Because um, obviously I've got a distribution company. But, <laughs> All right. Um, <laughs> 
What's it called again? <laughs> you know, the plug. <laughs> yeah, I thought, oh, yeah, there it is. Um, so, yeah, you just look really blank at me like, oh, did you just find out on the street? And I'm like, no, no, I had a warehouse full of them. So I ended up, um, I've actually got a bright green heat pump. We'll have to, we'll have to, get, we'll have to yeah. get a picture up yeah. of, of my bright green heat pump. But so for me, the big driver was, was nothing to do with uh, run cost saving. It was all to do with lowering my carbon emissions, mm-hmm. uh, and that was the big driver for um, for me. So um, I did that in a in a sort of measured enough way that you know I could get my wife on board. You know there wasn't a huge amount of disruption, and I tried to treat my heat pump journey as though I was speaking to another consumer. Now you know the the full end to end go in change all the insulation. I'm, I'm quite fortunate that I'm in you know four year old property, so it's quite well it's quite efficient anyway. But change the radiators, change the domestic hot water cylinder, do the full thing. You know, the engineer in me says, yes, of course, that's the right way to do it. But the homeowner in me and the person that's all ultimately got to get this past my wife, you know, the the uh, arguably the most important person in our house. Um, that um, there's another much... plug there. Oh, no. for your wife. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think she's, this, she's not a business. This isn't the Chris Higgs show. <laughs> <laughs> um, the um, so once, it, it, yeah, there's a you've taken me off train of thought. There, <laughs> it wasn't hard, was it? But what I was going to say was this has created a misconception, though. Well, just because uh, I think we're going to get into the mis- right. I, I, I might So the the journey for the installer. I mean, right. That's where we were before we went down the fabric first approach. We do need to touch on that, but I'm thinking that is that is a question around the consumer's mindset that mm. we need to talk about from how how we can influence more consumers on this journey. But that installer that's got this house that can come to you, that service that you'll provide around technical support, yep. system design, product specification, mm. and a top quality supply service. Yeah, is there a, is so if if you're an installer that's looking at this saying, well, I, I don't. I've never done heat loss calculations. I've never mm-hmm. had to do heat loss calculations. Then with the experience that you and your team have got, you can even connect, point them in the right direction of people who can do these heat loss calculations, mm-hmm. advise them to maybe do some of it. Into, it, it just like the Easy MCS back in the day, taking away some of the, the big upfront hurdles that an installer faces on that, yeah. on that, on that journey. So that it, you know, it, it must be, well, I know firsthand that it's a, it, it, it's a lot more comfortable making that transition to a new technology mm-hmm. when you've got somebody on the other end of the phone that is technically knowledgeable. Yeah. And I think Samuel, your, one of your guys in your yeah, place, yeah. I don't think there's any, there's too many people more technically knowledgeable than him. Mm. Somebody that can come to you with a set of plans or a customer's requirements. I want, I'm thinking of doing this in this job. I'm going to treat it as a bit of a pilot and take them through on on that journey. That's hugely valuable for this industry. And as you said, those installers that come through, once they've received that practical support and training, you're not going to get that in a classroom. You may get that mm. that, that mm. ability to stand in front of a heat pump, see how it works, set parameters, yeah, set, yeah. set the, the commissioning part of it. But that bit when you're on site and you're going, why isn't this working? Why isn't yeah. this valve switching? What have I done here? And somebody like Samuel can be on the phone and go, um, you know, have you wired that into, into the right path? Mm-hmm. That's hugely valuable, big support service. But those installers, they come through, they go through that support. Maybe, as you say, they need it on the first, second, third installation. Do you find that they then stay with you? Because surely that business model from a distribution and mm. merchant perspective, mm. when you look at what Surtas getting involved and the number of heat pumps that you're shifting, mm. you've just moved into a huge um, distribution center in Preston, yeah, is it? Uh, yeah, 15,000 square foot we've we've got. I'd say, ironically, it's the old Solfex building. Ah, so we've made, the we've, journey continues. It's like the circle, yeah. <laughs> it's the circle of life. The circle of life Meant continues. Meant to sell you to TP. Uh, and then it, yeah, well, <laughs> who knows? Who knows? Yeah. But that, for that to a huge facility there, I mean, how many heat pumps are you, are you shifting out of there? Um, so we'll do about 6,000, 7,000 a year. Um, that's, that's what we're shifting at the moment with a huge amount of scope to be able to do, um, you know, many more. Um, the thing is, you know, as a distribution company, when we first started, we were very much a, um, a technical support company, um, who had a, almost a sideline in selling heat pumps, you know, buy tech support for five grand. Oh, and here's a free heat pump. Yeah. yeah. And that's the way that we sort of market ourselves. And we were also, you know, the industry's best kept secret and all this kind of stuff. And it worked really well for the small business that we wanted to be at that point. As the industry grew and as, as you know, I had my own bi- uh, ambitions and obviously the business had their ambitions, you know, we need to be much more front and centre. So 
you know, a future where installers can almost um, do a huge amount of the work themselves is a future that I want us to move towards because, you know, we're now a distribution company with a really good technical foundation, but, you know, that technical foundation is very difficult to scale, you know, because you need yeah. passionate people, you need experienced people. On the tech side, you know, we've got um, uh, uh, Sarah Simon and, um, and Samuel, uh, three S's, I've just realised. Um, Sarah Simon and Samuel. Um, and, you know, just from technical prowess, you know, you've got obviously uh, Samuel and Simon, are, uh, you know, absolutely brilliant when it comes to the tech support side, but it's very difficult to find those guys. Um, so, you know, I'm always conscious of, right, how do we design better tools and, and better ways to engage with installers so that they don't need as much resource yeah. from us? It's not that we don't want to provide that resource. It's just that we don't want to be a bottleneck in the industry growing because ultimately distribution, once you get to the kind of scale that we are, is just a case of, um, you know, more real estate and uh, and just being able to move move more boxes, really. But you, um, know, you say that with the complexity of heat pump systems, and I'm sure there's an argument to say that, that if heat pumps get more more simple then that is that's another step on the on the journey but as you say you as a business you're adapting you're developing over time you're going mm. to make your processes more streamlined yeah, you yeah. Have, uh, scalable services maybe it's mm -hmm. you know, uh, videos to help or software that can automatically detect problems in the system so i think it, it, if, if this message is to installers to to engage on the journey mm. and um and we've got two parts we've got this we've got the the technical capabilities of installers. Yep. Um, we've also got this whole, we, we touched on it for Easy MCS, this, the quality management system requirements. Yep. And, I, and I, I'd be surprised if many of the, of the viewers who watch this show or people that are thinking about having a heat pump system, and when they, when they, when they say, I, you know, I can't find an installer or all the installers are out there extremely mm. busy, why aren't more installers getting involved? If you're an installer and, you, and, you're, and you're, you know, absolute quality with your hands and you're going out doing installations mm. and then you say i've been installing you know gas boilers into people's homes and doing quality installations for absolute years potentially a product that that could be extremely dangerous done wrong yeah yeah and then somebody says to you right okay you want to get involved in this new world in the renewable energy industry there's companies like freedom who will help you through the 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 uh the technical support process, uh, the technical and design and specification. Mm -hmm. You'll be able to use your experience of of, of uh, in installations to implement these systems correctly. And then you turn to the left, and mm. somebody says, "Oh, by the way, before you go any further, yeah, you need a quality management system that is." close to the standards of ISO 9001. Yeah, and we, we talked about that before, you know, it, it, MCS sort of always felt like it was ISO 9001 with renewable technology bolted on. Mm. Uh, you know, caveat, that's that's always been my perception. I've been in for 13 years. People may have different you know, views as to, uh, as to how they see it. But, you know, I've seen some, some really, really strong companies who've built their business off the back of organizing themselves around the quality management system so they've sort of uh, almost baked it into their dna but then you look at a lot of installers where maybe they've been trading for 10 years they're not used to that level of quality management no. system and, and i suppose i was quite fortunate because i came from um uh, uh railway design uh years ago so after i finished university and and you know got my uh, degree i moved into railway design to begin with so that was all you know the, the iso accreditation around that was just in, incredible as you can imagine so i was sort of used to that level of compliance and certification so when i saw mcs I sort of went, oh, that seems to make sense. But then I wasn't an installer. I mean, you know, God forbid you wouldn't trust me with a spanner, but stick me behind the next. No, because when you say railway design, you mean Brio. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's not <what> <laughs> <laughs> it was, you know, there's a lot that goes in. There's a track design manual that's quite uh, quite chunky. Uh, but uh, but anyway, moving swiftly. On. Straight pieces, curved pieces. <laughs> that's, that's how it works. Signal. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's exactly, how it, that's exactly how it works. I mean, bearing in mind the current state of the train system yeah tracking back to when you were doing train design <laughs> i don't think it's exclusively linked oh th this is just coincidence the other things on the positive <laughs> side weren't coincidence but this is a yeah this okay. is just a coincidence right. um so i looked at mcs and, and said right i can sort of understand you know what it needs to be there but uh, you know obviously you wouldn't trust me with a uh trust me with a spanner but um where we've got the MCS consultation, hopefully I can talk about this, you know, we're, mm. we're not moving on too sort of uh, far forward. The new MCS consultation that's out there at the moment is, 
for me, having digested those 33 pages, I've written a bit of an exec summary that's going to be up on LinkedIn. Uh, surely. Just, <laughs> that's just another plug. plug. Yeah. plug Could be found at Chris Higgs. I'm taking, yeah. I'm taking a lot This is of why plug. they won't be on the BBC. Oh, no, I'd say I've been on the BBC a couple of times. Anyway, anyway what have you again? Um, no, no. But um, I've taken a lot of points from your last last guest. Um, I understand he did a book. Did he write a book? But, um, yeah, you're going to do your book. Yeah, gonna, we all know you've book. got a signed copy. It's, it's just going to be a pamphlet, to be fair. <laughs> um, but the um, yeah, the, the consultation that, that's out at the moment, there's a huge um, huge amount of focus more on on what we're calling delivered quality as opposed to the sort of back office side, um, which again is just music to my ears because I said for years that some of the best installs that I've seen have been from non-MCS um, installers and some of the worst installs I've seen have been from MCS. Now that is an obviously that that isn't any sort of exclusivity around if you're MCS, you do a bad install. If you're non-MCS, you do a good one. It just so happens some of the guys that I've seen that have been non-MCS, they've just been incredibly proud about their work. So they've made an incredible looking plant room. You know, heat pump systems work well. They're forever on the phone to us just to make sure that everything's working as it should do. And um, some MCS installers that I've come across in um, sort of years gone by will have um, a sort of complacency around the equipment and just go, oh, the, yeah, I, I've seen this kind of thing before and, and just sort of bang it in uh, without understanding the subtle nuances of that particular unit. Um, so um, so I don't think MCS in its current guys is is that sort of marker of, uh, of quality and I think that's accepted in the industry. But the consultation as it's moving forward uh, or, or as it's expected to sort of come out in in September um, is, um, or at least the feedback will come out in September, that's much more around this delivered quality, mm. you know. And, and I think that's the kind of thing that for consumers to have real um, confidence in this industry, that's exactly the kind of thing that, that they need. And yeah, they need I, was saying to, I was saying to you before that, you know, a big, I, I've got massive, massive respect for homeowners because, you know, I've been in this industry for years and I know my, you know, I know how to sort of navigate. But anyone that's looking from the outside in saying, I want a heat pump, and then there's there's lots of, you know, years ago, there was lots of, you know, unjoined or or, um, or badly joined up, um, uh, you know, parts of the process that didn't really come together. And homeowners had to navigate a lot of that themselves um, through no, you know, there was no sort of maliciousness on, on the installer side. It was just, we were trying to find our way through. And I think, I think it's a huge testament to, um, uh, homeowners out there that have uh, embraced this technology and a huge, you know, huge thumbs up from from the industry that you sort of, um, you still moved forward with that, you know, uh, instead of looking at it going, God, this looks like a lot of hard work. This, no, I'm not into this. People looked at it and went, you know what? No, this is the right thing to do. I'm going yeah. to engage with heat, pump, whether it is run cost savings or. Well, that's the challenge, isn't it? You've got to get, I mean, when you, when you, if you're the, a consumer looking at this and you go, I've got two avenues here. You know, my boiler needs replacing and I'm hearing things about an alternative technology mm. in this uh, energy efficient green boiler replacement that's called a heat pump that I could go down this route. And then, and you're looking for where you're going to get that advice from. Your natural go-to advice is going to be your local, uh, you know, plumbing heating engineer mm -hmm. who you've used mm -hmm. before. So if that install, if that installer genuinely wants to go down that journey, they've got an organization like yourself with all the technical support and the distribution side mm -hmm. of things. MCS are making the compliance and regulatory processes easier. Mm. And, you know, an example of the kind of thing an installer had to have in place if they wanted to go through this journey. And again, nobody's saying that this is wrong, mm. but if you were to put yourself in the position of a man in the van or a man or woman in the van that is going out doing these installations and they have to have a documented procedure mm. on how they will deal with a customer complaint, mm if uh, a customer complains about something wrong in, uh, with, with the installation. We used to give the example um, when uh, we were training people on these quality management systems, that you've gone to, on a, to do a site survey at somebody's house and uh, you've walked through the house with muddy footprints on. Mm. And the customers rang up and said, you know, are you aware that you or one of your installers came in my house, they did this survey and they didn't take the shoes off and they mm. walked mud all the way through Okay, so what do you do in, you know, if we were talking about, I think you used the term before, a good company, what does a good company not do? Really sorry, Mr. Mr. and Mrs. Jones, I'm going to get somebody around, we're going to clean that carpet, yeah. we'll get it all sorted for you. But what MTS requires that installer to do is to log that complaint mm -hmm. on a customer complaint record, raise a customer complaint form, yeah, 
identify, you know, documents, everything you did to resolve that mm. issue, uh, raise a non-conformity that gets logged on the non-conformity register mm -hmm. about what's gone wrong with that and what cor corrective and preventative actions you've put in place yeah. to resolve that from that, to stop that from happening again. I mean, it, it, it's, I would say, absolutely fantastic that people would start to think that way, but how practical that is mm. in the in the installer world. And this is the kind of thing that I think our viewers and the people that are look, thinking about these technologies and wondering why installers haven't necessarily engaged, because that can be almost be quite frustrating for a homeowner. If you're thinking, I want to go down a heat pump route, yeah. and you're picking up the phone to people around you and you can't get it done, or you find that the installers that are already in the industry are extremely busy, mm. So the, these these um, these barriers that are there absolutely for protection mm. for the customer, but they are starting to get addressed. They are starting to be made simpler. So any installers who have looked at this in the past and said it's too much, with this consultation that's going on with MCS, it's worth looking at yeah. it again. Companies like yourselves have moved forward and, and your distribution and support and everything is there mm -hmm. for them to take advantage of it. But we do have one of what I think has is, is always been one of the biggest chicken and egg scenarios and mm. wanted to get your thoughts because this I mean this is to me has been absolutely bonkers for, for as long as I can I can remember. In order for a installer, so you're a heating engineer, for instance, this is the same for solar PV, solar thermal, biomass. Mm. But if, if you wanted to become an installer, in in order to become micro generation certification scheme approved, an MCS approved installer, you have to demonstrate an installation that you have done, that you have followed the correct design procedures and processes for. Mm. So you have to find a consumer who is willing to take the punt mm. on a non-certified installer um, that will use that installation for the purpose of becoming a certified installer. Yeah. Which, which is, you know, what I was talking about before where massive respect to homeowners who've looked at that and gone, oh, this is a, a bit of a, a bit of a gamble, you know, like admittedly the installer will have, you know, their necessary, um, uh, like MVQ level three or whatever for uh, plumbing and heating and perhaps all of their inventor uh, regs, but the actual MCS certification, the homeowner doesn't necessarily have the visibility over it as to whether the installer is is even going to become MCS. It's so a risk. So there, yeah, there is a bit of risk. There, and there's yeah. a, you know, there is, there's still a, a, probably more so in the past with a renewable heat incentive, if you had an installer come in that fitted your heat pump and they didn't go on to get certified, mm. and it is, it's a, it's an assessment, it's an audit. You are being assessed as to whether you are, you know, you you follow the, the the rules and well enough to become an MCS approved installer. Yep. So if you're if you don't pass that inspection mm. and don't get your accreditation and that installation therefore is not MCS certified under the renewable heat incentive, the previous scheme, you didn't get your RHI. Yeah. And under the new scheme, the the under the boiler upgrade scheme, where there's a five thousand pound voucher, potentially you don't get access to that. If, yep. But that the that is structured slightly differently, isn't it? That that potentially is on the installer, rather than the, the homeowner. Yeah. So the, if the installer doesn't go on to get MCS accreditation, the installer will not get the five thousand pounds off the boiler upgrade scheme. But mm. again, you can only apply for that retrospectively. Can't you? Have to be an MCS approved installer to become eligible to deliver the boiler upgrade scheme. Yeah. So I think that that's. I, I think that's where the conditional certification is going to come in as part of mm. the, the updated or the new version of the, the scheme to effectively give homeowners a level of protection around, right, you take a, um, a calculated risk, for want of a better phrase, you know, you engage with this installer. If for whatever reason this installer doesn't um, uh, doesn't conform to the MCS you know, scheme approval checks, or you know, it doesn't become MCS certified, it's okay. We will make sure that you have an MCS certified installation. It's like uh, a conditional license type thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. and I, and I genuinely think that's the kind of thing. I, I think MCS. I'll be honest. I'm I'm a big I'm a big fan of MCS. I love MCS. If I could change my name to Mark, me, me and Tom built a That's... business being based on putting these systems before them. So trust me, we're big fans of MCS. Yeah, and I think MCS gets gets um, a lot of bad press. But I mean, they just develop the the standards, and obviously it's the certification bodies that you know are out there to enforce those standards. But I think we've got to remember, 15 years ago when MCS sort of first came into fruition, no one knew anything. You know, no one really knew how to move this industry forward. So 
you know, I, I think it's like um, like any sort of level of politics where you can, it's really easy in the um, in the after effect to sort of look back and go uh, and go, oh well, I wouldn't have done that, you know, and look at a politician or a prime minister or whatever and yeah. say, right, you know, they made mistakes, I wouldn't have done that, and you're like, well, you haven't got to try and figure out how to fix a country, and where when MCS came along and they sort of had to figure out how to you know, make a, a regulatory standard around an industry that, w- that wasn't in any way, you know, mature, or, you know, that must have been a really difficult task. I think it would have been nice for us to have begun this transition uh, maybe a little while ago, but maybe it was a really good time that as the RHI ended, let the boiler upgrade scheme, scheme bed in, and now you now you move to a new version of, um, of the scheme. And I well, think- it's a little bit, it feels a little bit like the... Un- understandably, it's been throttled back. The industry has been throttled back. Mm. You know, if, if there hadn't been these protections and these safe safeguards and certain elements of bureaucracy wrapped up around it, God knows what position the heat pump industry would be in, but I would yeah. imagine it would be far worse than it is now. We would have definitely done many, many more heat pumps, but it would have been horrible installations, yeah. And and again, you know, going back to my point earlier about some of the best installs have been for non-FCS installers, you know, but they typically don't tend to be the high volume, mm. you know, so you'll get a company that comes in, you know, sells a sells a heat pump like they may sell double glazing, you know, and suddenly it's you've got ten thousand heat pumps out there and it's just warfare for everybody, you know, and it's just an awful time. So I think particularly when there's government incentives involved. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Where you got the government incentives. Quite significant yeah. ones at five thousand pounds, you know, there's or under the RHI that have been flying in yeah. yeah, definitely. So I think it's a case that look, MCS is not what we need to get to um take the industry forward, but it's definitely what we needed to get the industry to where it is. And, you know, it would have been, it would have just been the Wild West, oh, you know, God, without, yeah. without a level of, um, of kind of sort of certification or accreditation um, uh, around it. But yeah, I mean, that's, you know, it's really good timing that, you know, we're having this chat now at the same time that the consultation sort of went live a couple of weeks ago. And there's some really exciting stuff in there. I don't know if you can talk about a 33 page MCS consultation as being exciting, mm-hmm. but as someone, <laughs> as someone that's sort of spent 13 years in this industry, anything new that comes out that shows movement towards, you know, a, um, uh, what is it you said, like a future of heat pumpery? <laughs> your term. Um, I think you coined that phrase. That's a, uh, that's, it, it's, it's exciting. It's you got, well, I, I I think of it a little bit like a horse race. You you know, this feels like the, the, every every step that we go through, coming out of the RHI, uh, the the launch of the boiler upgrade scheme, and, and the and the simplification around some of those yep. parts. Then this consultation, it feels like the reins are getting released a little bit, mm. and every time those those reins get released. It, more installers can come in, more yep. installation yeah, starts yeah. going, more consumers start to get involved. And, and I suppose that's the, that's the other factor is that, you know, the installers, you've, you've got to have that balance. If you're going to generate consumer interest, mm-hmm. consumer interest is high right now, not yeah, just yeah. about heat pumps, but energy saving in general. Yep. And, the, um, you know, with, with the energy uh, crisis that's going on at the yep. moment, fuel bills as they are, um, the amount of people in, in fuel poverty or that are looking at this as a, mm-hmm. and needing a solution, not just wanting, but needing a solution, they might not necessarily be searching for, for heat pumps uh, specifically, mm-hmm. but searches on, uh, on, on, on search engines around what can I do to save money on manager bills? How yep. can I save money on manager bills? I think that's what we'll be touching on in the next episode. But unfortunately, that is all we all have time for today. Um, but before you go, we do have some exciting news to share. And in association with Freedom Heat Pumps and to celebrate our members, we're offering one lucky member of our Energy Challenge Group the chance to win a free heat pump installation worth up to £12,000. To enter the competition, just visit our social media channels where you can find out all the details and how to become a member of the Energy Challenge Group. Good luck and make sure you join us for our next episode where we'll be exploring how we build customer confidence in heat pumps to drive the adoption and tackle the 1.7 million boilers installed in the UK every year.